On today's episode, we bring you more from our friends with the Never Not Working segment. A lot of matchups as the bye weeks are done. The boom boom kicker, I mean the saga just continues. And some starts of the week from yours truly that you do not want to miss. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, like the video, and enjoy. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. You know what time it is. It's playoff time. Woo! For 50% <laughs> or less. Oh, you were saying how many are in the playoffs? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you needed that. I yeah, think Mike was just speaking of the the all the people out there. Yeah. I just feel like you could have gone, for some of you. Mm. You want to redo it? No, because I'm I'm a more statistical person, and we're and we're also kind of a you're one using one. these hodgy podgy words like some. This is a this is a one take show. Yeah, I just like that Jason threw in like a Justin Bieber, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. He just threw that in. Uh, Mike is right. Mike Wright is right. Oh, it's playoff time. Playing Mike White. How afraid? How excited? What are the emotions for tonight, Mike? You and I both have a uh, yes. little Christian McCaffrey playoff action going this evening. Pretty excited. Pretty, pretty excited due to the uh, everything being optimal tonight for Christian McCaffrey. But also terrified in that it's Thursday night and should touchdown variants bounce outside of our precious, precious <laughs> Christian McCaffrey. <laughs> it will be a tilt fest all the way to Saturday and Sunday. Now you are you are playing against Brock Purdy. Is this? I think that's the way it's lined up for me right now. Because and the the team I'm playing, they lost Kyler Murray, and our QB waivers are mighty thin. Yeah, wow. And if uh, I, and George Kittle, right? Yeah. So if if you get on the goal line, <laughs> oh man, the the chance of a George Kittle touchdown, which would be a double stack against you, versus the Christian McCaffrey yeah. rushing touchdown, which yeah. would be devastating for the. I mean. Thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> have you spicy tonight, <laughs> fellas? As you say, have you warned your wife and children of the risks? I booked them associated. A I got them a hotel. <laughs> I sent them out of the house. I said, "There's gonna. I'm doing some. I'm doing some reno in the house, so I need everybody out. <laughs> there will be a couple walls that <laughs> yeah, come down. See, if you come back and things are smashed into pieces, that's the contractors. Yep. yep. <laughs> You booked him a hotel. <laughs> nice That's staycation. Funny. Oh, man. You guys get out of here. I was like, Daddy how, needs to be alone. Yeah, like, how, here's his spa day. I booked uh, uh, in, in Hotel Manny. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Daddy wants to be alone <laughs> with his bottle of whiskey in, and Christian McCaffrey. Just in the dark. Wow. Yeah. Yes. It's <laughs> no lights on at just, all. Just the glow, just the glow of the television. Of the television. <laughs> yes. I love it. Um, it's playoff time. That's playoff time indeed. But the, guys, this game is really fun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love it. It makes me so happy. Let's do it every year. <laughs> Freaking fantasy football. Oh, man. It's never going to change either. No. No. There's no tweaks you can make that uh, – that will make the playoffs any less scary. But, I mean, it goes beyond Christian McCaffrey and the 49ers side. You've got the Ken Walker issue. Oh, I, I, man. I don't think I've seen more questions about a certain player than the Ken Walker start. And this is Thursday night, so you get your you get your information, right? You've got mm -hmm. your matchup, and then you find out if you are a favorite after tonight or uh, an underdog. So, so much to talk about. We don't have bye weeks anymore, right? I mean, that's finally over with. No, it's go time. Yeah, big week. Uh, big show, never not working. News and notes, the fantasy forecast, the starts of the week, the boom, boom kicker. Um, it's all coming to a head. Thank you for joining us. Thanks to everybody that joined us on Spotify Live yesterday afternoon in the party room. It was a good time. You can find us on Twitter at the FFBallers, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. And, of course, you can watch the show on YouTube. All the reactions to the weekend, you want to see those on our faces. YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. One quick announcement before we move on. Uh, we mentioned it yesterday, but we have a a special event tomorrow afternoon. 
We're doing a uh, DFS show live stream Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern. Borg and Betts in the building. You well, can see their a nice little graphic there. Yeah, they got a little graphic. Uh, they look so happy. Yeah. Ready to help you win some money, play some DFS this week, and they haven't helped me at all. Um, Kyle says they will be talking through the Saturday three game slates. Ooh, fun. Which, and, if, you, if you've never done, like, if you're new to DFS, it, you get these special events every once in a while, like uh, Thanksgiving. You get the three game slate. It can be pretty fun to figure out how are you going to set a lineup with that, and we get it again this Saturday. Well, and, and just looking at the schedule for these fantasy playoffs, like next weekend, your main slate is Saturday. Right. You have three Christmas games, but the majority of games will be played on Saturday. Jason, are, are you are you just realizing this? Are or? you telling me that Christmas is next weekend? Yes, that is uh, oh how the calendar works. Oh, my goodness. We are that close? Yeah. And you, Jason, your your fantasy team will get an opportunity to play that weekend. Oh, that's that's they great will. news. Yeah. It, 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 my lights will be on this <laughs> this weekend. Uh, I don't have to have the glow of the TV. Uh, that feels good. Yeah, yeah, sending your family away for Christmas, that's a little bit over yeah. the line. Oh, it's a Christmas present. <laughs> Here, I'm giving you this one early, honey. Santa said, get out. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Let's do some Never Not Working. Never Not Working. Presented by Head & Shoulders, Scalp Shield Technology. Available at Walmart. All right, Mike, what do you got for us today? Never Not Working. So today we are continuing our look at Dynasty as we head, you know, it's, it's about to be that time. The, the, the regular season is about to be over. You get the off season. You dive back into your Dynasty leagues, getting ready for those rookie drafts as well as making those trades. What are you going to do with these veterans? Uh, a couple veteran wide receivers that we want to talk about because these fellas could have different quarterbacks in 2023. And what does that do to their value? Starting at the tip, it, make, it makes me nervous it, right out of yes. the gate. Yeah, it, it should because we've seen quarterback change be <laughs> catastrophic for some, beneficial for some. But you got to start at the top. Coming off the injury, Cooper Cup, who will be heading into his year thirty, year of age. Those you know spins <laughs> around. So let's go back. That's how you say it. What? Going into his year 30, year of age, yeah. as they say. As as they say, 30 trips around the sun. If Jason notices something, <laughs> yeah, watch out. That was, uh, uh, Fuckland, just so you know, uh, that was Mike Wright speaking, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading your notes, Jason. Oh, okay. Uh, but Cooper Cup was the wide receiver four coming into the season. Unfortunate injury. What's going on with Matty Stafford? Debo Samuel was the wide receiver six. He'll be turning 27. That's Who's, your uh, your dynasty draft position. That's yeah, what he yeah, was before the season. But what in the heck? What are the 49ers going to do? I was I don't I think I was talking with uh with B Cat about this of like with San Francisco, you had the Jimmy Garoppolo trending up right before he got, you know, the the busted foot. They're like, "Well, we're going to be open to bringing him back." What does that do to Trey Lance? Now you have Brock Purdy who is in a position to succeed, this team is going to go to the playoffs. What does the team do if Brock Purdy makes an actual playoff run? Well, it's, it, it's not cut and dry that you just go right back to Trey Lance. Oh well, and Jimmy Garoppolo's in the and, in yes, the and he's in the mix too. Here's what I like: like I, I like Debo so much more than than Cooper Cup in that scenario of changing quarterbacks because the 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 team has proven that different quarterbacks can succeed in the San Francisco offense, whereas Cooper Cup's elite tier has existed solely with Matthew Stafford. Where was he? And he's going to be I'm trying to think where he was he the three last year with old. Goff. I, th I think he had a uh, wide receiver four finish with Goff, or at least a stretch. I'm maybe. looking it up right okay. now. So but we're talking world beater. I I'm, I'm talking about like – the difference between the best player in yeah, the game. Sure. 2019, he was... It just feels a lot riskier to me than a player that's three years younger in Debo, personally. Yeah, 2019, Cooper Cup was the wide receiver four. That would have been a Jared Goff year. Uh, and then Terry McLaurin, Dynasty startup, was the wide receiver 17. We bring these guys up because it's like, like, how do you compare them with their unstable situation to players like T. Higgins, Devontae Smith, D.K. Metcalf, who are much younger 
and, but they have a, they're, they're younger and they have stability at the quarterback position. But Cooper Cup, Debo especially, have been elite for fantasy purposes. So, like, where, like, how are you comparing at this point someone like Debo Samuel with everything up in the air to a to T Higgins, who's considered like the wide receiver two on his team, yet seen to be dominant, much younger than Debo, a couple years younger. That's a lot in, in dynasty. Jason, how are you feeling about Debo now compared to T. Higgins, where it was coming into this year, it was, wide, like I said, wide receiver six in startup? Yeah, I mean, uh, Debo is, is great, and I agree with Andy that his quarterback situation isn't the end of the world. He's got Shanahan to scheme him plays. I Honestly, the fact that Christian McCaffrey is there and will be there for a while probably has a, a, a bigger negative effect on Debo Samuel um, than the quarterback situation. If you're just saying, who do I prefer, Debo Samuel or, or T. Higgins, T. Higgins being the two, it's definitely T. Higgins. I would draft him ahead of Debo in a startup for sure. He's, okay. he's several years younger, uh, has Joe Burrow, and is locked in as a long-term really great fantasy option. McLaurin is the, uh, the, the Deontay Johnson situation of the bunch where um, we've seen him extremely ineffective at times He's the one I would be like, Mike. You moved on from him in Dynasty. Yeah, I because I had to during rebuild a, a little bit during yes. a stretch of success. I would be. Uh, he's not on the top of my wide receiver list in Dynasty. No, his, his quarterback situation isn't going to get better. Um, the, the The team has played well enough to where they don't have a, a top five right. future star quarterback pick coming in. You you're going to have it be Heineke or Jimmy G. Yeah, I mean, Wentz or, or a Jimmy G type of guy come in and, and not be the answer. And then you want to talk, uh, take a quick look at these first-round rookie wide receivers who have been overall sensational. Uh, I mean, it it feels like basically every single one of them looks like they should be a hit. Drake London was the first wide receiver. It hasn't been a very evened-out fantasy season for, from him, but you've seen – at least I've seen enough. I'll say it that. I've seen enough from Drake London to know he is good. He can be a very good fantasy player, but he's got that system around him. Who in the heck is his quarterback? Garrett Wilson. What are the Jets going to do? Is it going to be Mike White? Is it going to be back to Zach Wilson, Chris Olave? Every Jameis single Wins rookie. Yes. Every single one of these rookies has a quarterback controversy coming to them. Chris Olave with with the Saints and what are they going to do with Andy Dalton, Jameis Will, uh, Jameis Winston, Jameson Williams for the Detroit Lions? He might be the might safest. Have the, yeah, the most yeah. stable situation is Jared Goff. But they could move on. Like there is potential that the Lions f find a way to move up in the draft and get and get their quarterback, Jahan Dotson. Same problem as Terry McLaurin and the Manders, Traylon Burks. We heard tons and tons of rumors last year that the the Titans wanted to move on from Ryan Tannehill will they be able to do that so it's just it's very interesting how are you looking at all of these players right now is is, is Garrett Wilson just clearly at the top for you uh, or or do you feel like no I think that Olave has e even with the mystery of who the quarterback could be Olave could overtake Garrett Wilson as the number one rookie or Those, sophomore, Wilson, and, uh, Wilson and uh, Olave are in a tier of their own to me. They're okay. they're the highest tier, but I would I would put Garrett Wilson ahead. All of these players have good prospects going forward, great value. First round rookie wide receivers in Dynasty almost always hold their value, even if they have a lost year. Like Jahan Dotson had a couple good games, then lost a lot of the year to injury and has been kind of trying to work his way back on. But as far as holding value in Dynasty, when you are a first-round NFL wide receiver drafted, even on a down year, you're going to hold your, your value if you want to move out. So I'm always in on, on first-round rookie wide receiver. If you're going to target any of these players, let's we'll leave Wilson or Olave out because you're saying they're in the high tier of would be pretty difficult to acquire and trade. But between London... Jamison, Dotson, and Burks. I'd be targeting Jamison Williams. As okay. I, I think the future of Jamison Williams is very bright. It feels a little bit like, you know, you could have gone and acquired Garrett Wilson after the slow start this season. Mike did. Yeah, I you, got him. Yeah, you, yeah. you did. When he was starting to – I mean, he wasn't really heating up then. But, like, Jamison Williams right now feels like the player that's just one game away from being like, oh, yeah, that's who he is. All right. 
All right, get up to 100% dandruff protection. That is never not working with Head & Shoulder Scalp Shield technology available at walmart.com. Use it every time you shampoo and see the difference. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. All right, Josh Jacobs, the quad, the hand. Oh, it's not the calf anymore. That means he's getting stronger. (laughs) I mean, limited. He had the calf injury that was very severe, popped up late in a week, and then rookie of the year it into yes. great we success. Just, <laughs> you sure he doesn't want to take the week off or something? Oh, oh. someone playing against Josh Jacobs? Oh, no. Um, yeah, obviously you don't want these injuries. And you remember, he played through the hand injury in the game. So I, Who's the best offensive weapon for the Raiders? Between Adams and... Jacobs? Yeah, how would you define like taking the best away? <laughs> uh, Devonte Adams is is their best one. Yeah, I agree with that. Great, great. All right, T Higgins. <laughs> so do you, <laughs> Tyler Boyd? Limited in practice, the hamstring, the finger. Cool. Um, it, it's nerve wracking. Uh, Hayden Hurst doubtful. You know, you saw Joe Burrow get it done without two thirds of his wide receiver room and his tight end last week, so that was kind of impressive, but. We we did talk on the party room last night about T. Higgins and whether or not you uh, would feel confident starting him. Uh, but for those of you that didn't hear, I think there was a little bit of split in that. I I I would be, I'm just really fearful of having it happen again. I don't think the word confident is going to come into the equation for any fantasy Correct. manager this week. I think I use the word I want to. I want to start T. Higgins. That word. Yeah, you, that's the word you use. Yeah, want okay. versus versus. We could um, go. With, what about want? Confident. All right, there. It's one word. Want. It's not a. Is that, is wanna a real word, or is that just something we? I don't think so. Like, is it officially recognized by Webster? Wanna. W a n n a. Yeah. Wanna. It's it's recognized by Google. <laughs> well, I, that's not surprising. <laughs> Good enough for me. Dame, all right, let's talk about the Patriots' injuries right now. Damian Harris returned to a limited practice. Jacoby Myers, limited. Devontae Parker didn't practice with a concussion. Ramondre didn't practice with the oh, ankle. Oh, man. Uh, I am – this situation stinks. <laughs> Jason pointed out yesterday Damian Harris did not practice at all the week before. Um, this is not a guarantee he's back out there if he's limited with the thigh. Like, we've seen him – like previously in the year when he's missed games, he has had some limited practices, but this is a mess. Like you don't, you don't have room on your team to have four options. Like right now, there are four potential fantasy running backs on New England: Damian Harris, Ramondre could come back, Pierre Strong, Kevin Harris. Uh, Ew. Yeah, and, and and we won't. And they play the, the Raiders. Raiders. I know. So someone's scoring. Yes. Like, I guarantee. I have never done a team touchdown guarantee, but one of these running backs is scoring a touchdown for New England. I think uh, with the information I have right now, if I had to put the wager down, I would go with Damien Harris with the limited practice. If he plays, he's the the most likely, in my opinion, to score. And then I think Damien Harris kind of takes Kevin out of the equation. Uh, I think that it would be uh, the timeshare, but mostly between uh, between Damian Harris and Pierre Strong, as, p- using Pierre Strong as the pass catcher. But Damian Harris becomes very interesting should he suit up. I mean, yet yes, he'll see thirty whatever, thirty to forty five percent of the snaps, but some of those attempts will be near the goal line. Titans wide receiver situation: Traylon Burks didn't practice concussion. Man, Robert Woods didn't practice due to illness. Chiga Conquo. Yep. Keep your eyes on him. Rondale Moore on IR for the Cardinals. He's not playing again yeah. this year. Uh, Brandon Cooks is practicing. Nico Collins is off to the side watching practice. You know, is he smiling? Was he frowning? Do we have any reports, Kyle? Yeah, we need some. What's um, the facial expression situation for Nico Collins? I know you're in on that. I saw him drinking like a Gatorade bottle. Okay. So he's thirsty. So he's That's hydrating. It. Yeah, he's hydrating. I mean, who, who watches practice while while – Pounded down some electrolytes. Somebody who's getting ready to maybe watch it again the next day. <laughs> yeah, the Brandon Cooks news is called Chris Moore news to me because Chris Moore is a fine pickup and play if both Brandon Cooks and Nico Collins are gone, uh, given the matchup against Kansas City. If Brandon Cooks is back, I'm I'm not 
hap- not really trying to start yeah. Christmas. It's tough. All right, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Fantasy Forecast. Did we ever discuss Rex Burkhead in the context of Damian Pierce's injury? No, because we you're not we respect our our fans. <laughs> we respect ourselves. Yeah, I mean, Dam- you're Rex not- Rex Burkhead will be the primary runner, and then Agumba Wale will be the pass catcher. I just feel like you would look for an opportunity to stand for Rexy. He this, will. This is your dude. Look, he will get. Is he not sexy, Rexy, this week? Well, I mean, he's kind of a middle-aged guy. Oh, he's too old to be sexy. Yeah, uh, because 15 for 25 is not not sexy. What do they call it when like a gentleman gets a little bit older? You're not sexy anymore? You're... Silver fox. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, he's not. He's bald. So um, Yeah, he's, he's not dapper. I don't know if dapper is You can't right be word. dapper without hair. Hmm. Or a silver Shoot. fox. That's... Hair is really going to be – you can't be any of these things in your future, oh, Jason. Man. Apparently not. So, yeah, I mean, in, without surgery. <laughs> so we'll see. All right, into the fantasy forecast we go. We have three Saturday games. We're going to cover them first. The Colts are 4-8-1. and one. Minnesota is 10-3. and three. The game's in Minnesota, and the DraftKings Sportsbook line has Minnesota as four-point favorites. The over-under is 48. Uh, Minnesota can clinch the NFC North with a win. Or a Lions loss to the Jets. Both teams began the year with the same preseason win total of nine and a half. It has not gone well for the Colts. And speaking of clinching, uh, playing the Colts <laughs> <laughs> in your fantasy lineup because you might want to do it. The matchup is so so juicy. Looking at the Vikings on the on the season, thirty first against quarterbacks 32nd against wide receivers in the past six weeks 28th against quarterback 25 against running backs 32nd against wide receivers this defense allows points you yes minnesota's favored by four but that 48 point over under puts the colts at an implied team total of 22 which is that's not bad at all (laughs) yeah i mean you're you're, like it obviously uh i can't I can't uh, agree. Okay. But I understand why you're making the case because you're trying to find some value here in a plus matchup for a team with players that have provided, you know, Michael Pittman um, has had his games this year. You, you've you had, you know, obviously Jonathan Taylor is going to be in your lineup. Paris Campbell has been heavily involved. He's been a, a better points per game player than Pittman has been since about week four. But I can't, I can't get behind the Colts going into Minnesota this week. And there's a lot on the line for Minnesota. Jeff Saturday and Matt Ryan combined freaks me out. So I just can't find myself there. And it's just a difference of opinion. Yeah, I I am more on the side that I do think the Colts will put up points. The 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 Vikings defense has just been so bad. And obviously, this is a team that's won ten games, so they're not a bad. Uh, roster, their offense is going to be able to move against the Colts. There, there should be value to be had, whether that's Pittman Jr. or Paris Campbell. Obviously, Jonathan Taylor's in. I think even Alec Pierce. Well, yeah, because big plays are really what's been uh, hurting Minnesota the most, and that does kind of lend itself towards Alec Pierce. Yeah, last week was not good for the yearly numbers for the Minnesota Vikings. They gave up 55 fantasy points. <laughs> To the wide receiver position. So those Lions last week were going mm-hmm. crazy. So uh, I just don't trust Matt Ryan to take advantage of such things. I totally, That's all. I totally understand that. Um, Dalvin Cook is in. Jefferson is in. Uh, what Hawkinson do you, is a Lockinson. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. Uh, what do you do with Adam Thielen? Uh, you, probably, I bench him. you probably don't need to mess around. Yeah, I I put him on the bench. the The Colts have been pretty good against fantasy wide receivers, seventh on the season, uh, and he he was popping up on the injury reports and things. He came through last week, very plus matchup uh, against the Detroit Lions, and it took kind of a uh, 
a pretty big touchdown there to get it done. So I'm I'm not playing Thielen, in, but what are you doing with Kirk Cousins? You have an implied team total of 26. Are you willing to stream him? So yeah, he's a clinch and stream. Kirk Cousins or a super streamer Mike White? Andy? <laughs> <laughs> Look, Cousins is safer. Okay. To get you a floor because of the injury risk to Mike White. But otherwise, I'd want Mike White. If okay. I'm if I'm not a heavy favorite, I'm probably going to play Mike White. Jason, Dalvin Cook or Jonathan Taylor, who has the better game? You have a, a Vikings defense that has been uh, beat up recently on the ground, but on the year schedule adjusted, they're 10th, whereas uh, the Colts defense 25th against the run. Uh, past six weeks, they're 28th. Like, who has the better game between those running backs? Uh, both are going to be phenomenal options. Um, I, I think Jonathan Taylor <laughs> probably ends up with a better game because he's more the centerpiece of the Colts' offense than Dalvin Cook is of the Vikings' offense. But, you, you, I mean, both are – you're talking about top five running backs this week. Uh, Dalvin Cook should be a smash play. He wasn't someone I loved last week against Detroit. I do love him this week. When you're at home – the favorite by four uh, in a plus matchup. There's, you know, no decisions to be made there. Just high fives to be given. Michael Pittman. I'm playing him. I would play him as well. There's a lot of, you know, we go through tons of names where, you know, you're talking about a spot start. I Adam do think Thielen or Michael Pittman. I would go with Pittman. Michael Pittman. Okay. <laughs> would you act? Would you play Thielen over Pittman? I I am nervous about that Pittman floor. I mean that's that's uh, two two fantasy points last last time out. I I I don't know. I guess I'd try Pittman out there because of the matchup. Yeah, I guess I'd be with you guys on that. Yeah, the Dallas defense last week they um, <clears throat> or you know the last time you saw Pittman, but prior to that you had Pittman with sixty one yards, seventy one yards, fifty three yards. So he's he's yeah, got an I'm involvement. With I'm yeah. with you. Uh, let's go ahead and take a quick break, and we'll come back with the Ravens Browns. Baltimore, 9-4, and four, taking on the 5-8 and eight Cleveland Browns. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Cleveland minus three. Really? Quarterback situation. The over-under is 37. And uh, this game is going to be gross. Yeah. Gross alert. Yep. 37-point over-under. Baltimore games have hit the under 9 of 13 times. Cleveland hasn't hit their implied point total in three straight games because Vegas can't figure out how inept – Voldemort is. Uh, we don't think that Lamar will be back out there. No, did not and, practice Wednesday. Um, yeah, this is this is a mess. I mean, you you haven't been able to witness a an Amari Cooper game with Deshaun Watson that gives you great confidence. Although at home, Amari Cooper is going to be a start for you. You just have to hope that Watson figures things out. I mean, it was better last week than the week before. It wasn't good. Yeah, he he's he's obviously dealing with a hip issue, which is the downside. The the you know the upside is he's been great for the majority of years or for the majority of the year. He's been awesome at home, and last week he was on the field for eighty six percent of snaps. So you know he's out there. I'm going to start Amari Cooper. You know I I would start him over Pittman pretty easily. Nick Chubb is the RB five on the year, but he's only oh, been top twenty four once in the last month. Uh, Donovan <sighs> Peoples Jones double digit fantasy points in four of six games. He's looked good. He seems to have some sort of rapport with uh, Mr. Watson, but you know, I, I like David and Joku better, you know, as a, a difference maker this week than I think you know Peoples Jones or even maybe Cooper. Yeah, David and Joku's been uh, very involved. He's back completely from his injury, uh, running a lot of routes, had targets, and a great uh, matchup last week. And the Ravens. You know they're they're pretty good against the run. I think you're going to need to throw the ball, and David and uh, Njoku's going to be a good option. It was it was Njoku's highest snap share of the season uh, off of the injury. Nine targets, seven for fifty nine. He's just he's just different, you know, physically, uh, athletically. Yes, he, he is. even his touchdown, the way he stretched the ball out. I mean, on the other side, the the real question is is can you trust Mark Andrews? Because right now. Oh, it's been really bad. I mean, he's going to be on the road in this game. He hasn't hit double-digit fantasy points since week six of the season. You have somebody in David Njoku, Jason, who you love this week. Mm -hmm. Are you? Would you have the stones 
Oh. <laughs> to play David and Joku. I mean, let's let's take a look. <laughs> like versus Mark Andrews. Yeah, like versus Mark oh. Andrews. I would love to know the points per game difference between those two on the year. So first off, you have to say Tyler Huntley. Right, that's what did. I was He was upgraded to full practice on Wednesday. He left Sunday's matchup with a concussion. Full practice on Wednesday means he's probably going to play. So at least – yeah, if Huntley you is, have that. If Huntley is out there, it's not it's not a decision to be made. I I couldn't put Mark Andrews on the bench. I realize he has not been great. Uh, last week was a complete dud, but obviously ended up with the majority of the game with the third string quarterback. If that same third string quarterback is out there, you might have to take a look at what your options are. But it it looks like as of this recording that yeah. Huntley um is going to be in line to play. We'll know beforehand, and and then I would be still confident in Mark Andrews. Yeah, they're. They're not too far apart in points per game on the year, David Njoku and Mark Andrews. And uh, I believe Njoku got knocked out of one game, right? I believe so. So 10.7, 9.2. Last year you saw Huntley with the rapport with Andrews. You hope he can get that back on the road here. The The Browns defense 13th against tight ends. Everyone wants to know what you do with J.K. Dobbins this week. The Cleveland defense, uh, 29th against the run over the last six weeks, 31st on the year. This has been one of the best matchups for running backs you can find. I mean, are we all in the J.K. Dobbins camp this week? Yeah, we, we talked about it um, last night that the Browns, while on the course of the season and even, you know, the, the last six numbers has been good. The last three weeks, they've been shutting down the run a little bit more. Uh, J.K. Dobbins is certainly someone that you can start, but I see him as, as a running back three option solely because he doesn't uh, he doesn't really catch passes because so he has a giant rock in his shoe while he's running. <laughs> right. Um, his gas tank is is still very small. Uh, he b blamed that for the reason why uh, that run did not house it. So yeah, I the best way to kind of conserve cardiovascular health is limping. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah, it was so weird. So I I see him as a running back three option that you can start. Zonovan Knight. I would go Zonovan. Oh, Ra Raheem man. Mostert. I think I'd – I oh, man, Raheem Mostert, the weather is going to be bad against Buffalo, playing good, but he should be the guy. Eileen Mostert. Barry. Najee Harris. Najee. Okay, this you're, you're living up to your yeah. RB3 category here for J.K. Dobbins. I think it could be a little bit brighter for Mr. Dobbins. I, I do too. This is the, uh, the fourth highest run percentage team in football with finally some talent there at the running back position. I'm I think he's an RB2. Okay. How about that? Mike, uh, I yeah, I'd put him at a low end. Like I I think the Zonovan Knight one is very difficult with the matchup against the Lions who have kind of turned it around against the run. Uh, and we're not glancing at wide receivers in Baltimore, are we? This week no. with such a low over No, 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 no. No, not doing it. Let's talk about the uh the weather game here. Miami 8 and 5 taking on the Buffalo Bills who are sitting at 10 and 3. DraftKings Sportsbook line, Buffalo minus seven at home. The over-under is 43 and a half. Miami beat the Bills in week three, 21-19, where Josh Allen threw the ball 63 times. Uh, but Miami is sitting here, you know, they they are on a bit of a, a funky ride. It's not been good. They've looked pretty ugly on the offensive side of the ball. In fact, a player like Jalen Waddle, who's been pretty quiet lately, is a question mark in terms of the kind of production you're going to get. I think it's been four weeks of struggles for Mr. Waddle. Yeah. So uh, are we expecting Miami to make the adjustments necessary to give you some excitement in this game? I, I am pessimistic. Uh, someone like Tyreek Hill, who it, it the scheme doesn't matter, defense doesn't matter when you have that kind of speed. And Waddle has that, but Waddle has been waddling. He hasn't. It does not seem at full strength right now. So I'm I'm a little bit pessimistic, especially when you consider that you know we've talked about the weather a little bit. I'm looking at the I'm weather. Not, right. I'm not seeing bad weather. Did okay. it, I'm did seeing precipitation. I'm I, seeing precipitation chances at nine percent now. Okay, so what? the the, the, the drop from ninety? No, here's what's funny is I was going to bring this up. The source that I usually use that is pretty accurate. Yeah. I have never seen this number, but it is saying one hundred percent chance of precipitation. Not this is, so they're not even given a one percent chance it, it, that it doesn't. Um, yeah, that's man. So pay attention. I mean, the weather, weather be weathering, but I, I think I mean it's been projected for rain most of the week. 
Yeah, so uh, TBD, we'll, we'll get an update on that tomorrow. Significant Obviously. lake effect snow over the weekend with nine inches or more of snow in the most persistent lake snow areas. Um, Heavy snow and wind. Yeah. Woof. Yeah, so, uh, we'll see. Yeah, the the source I looked up must be inaccurate compared to this Cameron Wolf tweeting that out. So, uh, it's it's fair to say there's heavy weather risk in this game. Yes, and that the passing game that has been had been flowing for the Dolphins, uh, there are more question marks surrounding it when you play a a Bills defense that is uh, the last six weeks they've started to show some signs of improvement, especially against the quarterback position. Uh, and, 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 and you have the dolphins going from a West coast game, you know, they just, uh, or, you know, they, they, I guess they were, uh, they were in LA, right? I'm pretty sure the dolphins played in the chargers in LA. Correct. Right. And then they played San, at San Francisco the week before. Yeah. So now they're going to Buffalo. This is just a lot of traveling. There was a good defensive scheme by the chargers that was implemented. And now you're playing a good defensive team. I, I'm, I'm a little bit pessimistic on the Dolphins outside of Tyree Kill right now. So Tua Tungavailoa, is he entering a category where you're willing to play somebody you have more confidence in that's in the streaming category? Because Tua has been a lock for most teams this year. Yeah, he's he's right now uh, my quarterback 10. So I have him behind uh, Trevor Lawrence, Dak Prescott, um, Kirk Cousins. He's right next to Mike White, and that one's always going to be the, the big question this week is yeah. how much do you believe in Mike White? Brooks, what's the question that you had for this game? Oh, does you about Waddle? You guys are talking about Waddle. I just wondered, like, are there any circumstances you'd actually bench him with the worry oh, you guys man. are not putting for, out there? Not for me um, because, I you know, last week was a Tua problem. It wasn't a Waddle injury problem. He was out there, I think, second highest snap count of the year. And I think the only way for this game to go, you know, the way anybody wants it to go is for these two teams to to battle it out and to, to put some points on the board, divisional matchup. The weather is a uh, a worry. That's what, no, no doubt about that. I think a scenario that is plausible is what if you had DeAndre Hopkins – against Denver with Kirk Cousins. So on the road against Denver, or you're picking between him or Jalen Waddle. <laughs> Did you just say with Kirk Cousins? Oh, I'm sorry, with uh, uh, Colt McCoy? Colt McCoy, ah. yeah. That's, that's his you name. You see them the same? or? I uh, know. You know. Uh, but Jalen Waddle or DeAndre Hopkins? Um, I'll, I'll play Hopkins. Yeah, Colt okay. McCoy is, is a pretty good at getting the ball to DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah, and I had one other name I wanted to bring up with – regards to whether you would actually bench Waddle because this one is legitimate. He could be someone you picked up a couple weeks ago off of the waivers. Christian Watson, who's been on fire off the bye. Wow. Would you play if, – if it came down to like you're, you've got really good wide receivers, Yeah. would you yeah, stay in the if, flames I mean, of if, Watson or the If you're talent? in that boat, I would play Christian Watson, but you're talking about – Watson's had like a five- or six-week run now. Yeah. This isn't a one-week boom. Um, so hopefully you can play them both. Yep. Tyreek Hill, he's in. Jeff Wilson didn't practice on a Wednesday. Raheem Mostert could get 15 or more touches in this game. Yeah, it should be – like the process, is, it should be a ton of Mostert. Can he come through? That's the TBD part. Will it be the, the Mostert you've seen or uh, – no. Boston! <laughs> That's what you went with? I didn't get crickets or anything. I can't. Oh, there it is. Uh, appropriate. Devin Singletary, James Cook, or no one? Mm, I don't like this question. If, uh, I mean, if you have to pick between them, um, I, I I still lean the explosive speed of Cook right now, but I would go no one as my as my answer. You know, the the running backs we were looking at earlier, Dobbins, all the all the guys you named earlier, I would play ahead of Singletary and Cook. We getting a big game out of Josh Allen this week. Probably, because uh, I think he's going to yeah, run. He's going to have to run a lot. All right, the Sunday games. Let's jump in. Philadelphia, 12-1. and one. Chicago's 3-10. Uh, the DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Philadelphia minus 9. The over-under is 48 and a half. And the world wants a very, very healthy Justin Fields for this game. Well, he is not. Yeah, right now he didn't practice due to illness. But, again, I, you know, send him the uh, with the emergency. Yes, Send him whatever you need to get him on this field because his availability says a lot to me about the ceiling of this game. This Eagles offense is rolling. 
Yeah, they're number one in points scored. They're third in total yards. They're number one in fourth down conversions. They have been dominating. Jalen Hurts. It's not like you're benching him. No. But if you are in the playoffs, you'd love 37 to 40 points, not 25 to 29. Yeah, you'd love to see him score in the second half. And he might not need to if Justin Fields isn't out there. And and Fields in his own right is a phenomenal start. I realize that the Eagles are a a, a great defense, but it doesn't really matter when you have the running capabilities and the now permission and game plan to run and utilize those, Fields is is in. I mean, obviously, he's he's got an illness right now. I would assume uh, by uh, Saturday or Sunday for his game that he'll be good to go. And if he is, I would play him over, you know, the, all those guys we just mentioned. That's not even a question, right? To, uh, yeah, and, I'd go Fields. Yeah. David Montgomery's been fairly steady of late, getting a lot of the work out of the backfield since the Herbert injury. You can definitely play David Montgomery. You you just want touches. And again, I I'd feel better about David Montgomery with Justin Fields in the lineup because I want them I want him to have a chance to score and get inside the twenty. But he'll have enough work. Chase Claypool, don't no. don't think about that. Cole uh, Komet. Yeah. It's hard to remember how good <laughs> it he feels was like playing forever. because yeah. it, simply because of their bye week. Uh, but you know, before the bye week, seven targets, six targets, then a four, then a seven, then a six. Most of his games, he's been very involved. We like the actual talent, and um, you know, this is the the position where you can play mediocrity. Yeah, I I think Cole Komet's back into top twelve upside. Okay, all right. What about the other side of the ball, Miles Sanders? Seems yes. like a smash play yeah. this week. Yep, I'm not overthinking this one. Miles what do you do with? D Dallas Goddard, who is uh, still questionable to return. If he's active in this game, are you willing to go right back to Dallas Goddard as a foundational piece? If he is, oh, man. Context, of course, but more than likely if he's active, I'm going to put him out there. But we do have uh, the latest quote from yesterday. Uh, Goddard himself saying it's still up in the air. Things are trending in the right direction, but got to get out there and practice and see what happens. Yeah, I mean, you you can really put it to the test here with Cole Komet. Like, if, if Goddard was active and you've got those two guys who are you starting, I would start Dallas Goddard. I agree. Um, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. People are excited to get him back for the fantasy playoffs. A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith have been great. you got to get them out there. And, I again, I hope this is a competitive game. It's a great over-under, and uh, I think that's indicative of what Justin Fields can do even against a good defense. So the recipe for the Bears lately have been stay competitive, make some flashy plays and then lose. Yeah. So it, it's kind of wild because the season record wise is exactly as you prescribed for the bears and the performance by Justin Fields has been the surprise and the delight. Like I had a friend of mine who's a bears fan, just oh, you visceral did. anger at my three win prediction for the bears. <laughs> he tells me now he is, hoping they only win three games at this yeah. point they're three and ten and he wants that high draft pick if you're a bears fan you got i would be it's very, the best three win season you've had i'll be very very pleased you were able to get some draft capital to try and improve the team justin fields i think answered some questions so, so you don't have to go into the draft with that really high pick going ah do we take a quarterback do we not no it's it's now take best player available or even trade down yeah i, I think you're in a very good spot they have got the resources to build the right way in a division that's going to have opportunities, right? Like this Minnesota team, 9-0 in one-score games, that's something that you see pivot real quickly. And then I'm old yeah. enough to remember when the Cardinals were 7-0 and last year. <laughs> and it just feels like the you know you, you look at the, the Eagles and the Vikings that have just been great this season, they don't seem the same great. One yeah, of, one of them seems actually great, and one of them seems like a little house of cards. We get like a Lions Bears battle at the top here for a few years. <sighs> That'd be uh, fun. Ooh. Uh, Atlanta. Hey, I don't think Al would like that, but you've had the division for like a hundred years, so. Yep. Atlanta's five and eight. The New Orleans Saints are four and nine. Less exciting to talk about this one. The DraftKings Sportsbook line. You New Orleans have a massive playoff implications. Here. Yeah, New Orleans minus four over under is forty three and a half. This is essentially a playoff elimination game for these teams, which they should be very much eliminated already, but they're not. Uh, so you have uh, Desmond Ritter making his first NFL start. Marcus Mariota, if you hadn't seen, on IR, knee surgery. Third-round pick, Desmond Ritter. 
if I had to, if I had to kind of carve out what I want to do with my first start in the NFL, I don't think going to New Orleans would be on the top of my list. But uh, I think this coaching staff in Atlanta will do everything they can to prevent catastrophe for Desmond Ritter. Which you know, Mike, you talked about it. I think on Spotify Live or in the show yesterday morning, we we don't expect a lot of pass attempts from Desmond, Desmond Ritter. They this is a team that will hand the ball ruthlessly to Tyler Algier and Cordero Patterson and and Huntley and and Desmond Ritter will run the football like over under genuinely over under of of 12 completions in this game for Desmond, for Desmond Ritter. Desmond, I think that's a pretty good line. Uh I lean I lean the over, but it's a that's a very tough call. Yeah, I figure about 20 pass attempts. And so rookie yeah. throwing the ball to not great options. Yeah, that what a what a good line you have set there. But it does also insinuate that the running backs will be very involved. Cordero Patterson has, uh, I believe, three games in a row where you're both disappointed, but he's gotten double digit opportunities. And this is a game where I think you're going to see him uh, more involved and is an okay play. It's not a perfect matchup, but if they're going to score, and you assume, look, even with Ritter, they're going to be, they're an NFL team. They're going to go out there and they're going to score and if I had to put money on who gets a touchdown in this game, it would be Cordero Patterson. Just for some context of what to expect, not that I've seen a lot of hype about Desmond Ritter being some sort of playoff winner at the running or the quarterback position, not the collegiate runner that many of these other guys were. I mean, he played 14 games in his senior season, ran for 300 yards. Um, he will be mobile. Yeah, he's, he's but he's not. He's not Justin Fields or or right. um, Jalen Hurts out there. Uh, Cordero Patterson, I, I don't know what in the world to do with him. I really don't. Like, There's a situation where players have like Ramondre out this week, and maybe you have the option of pivoting to a Cordero Patterson, and he's in the kind of scary category. Like We've never seen him with Ritter on the field. We, we've we seen this team stay committed to Tyler Algier at times. Like, What do you do with Cordero? Because how low is the floor? Yeah, since returning from the injury, Cordero is averaging 42% of the running back attempts and 53% of the running back targets. So he is – he's not a – it's not a workhorse situation. He is very much a part-time player on a bad offense with a rookie quarterback. So I'm – I'm pretty scared to play uh, Cordero Patterson. Desperate times certainly call for, for certain things. Looking at the matchup over the past six weeks, the Saints are 19th against running backs. So, so you know, right in the middle of the pack there. Uh, I don't know if you play any Falcons. He, he's Real, like, he's he, basically like a Latavius Murray type of player. I'm I'm starting to really without put, put Latavius the, volume though. Right, I'm starting to put it to like to the test where it's like, okay, I think there's an avenue for him to have a very relevant game here, but in reality. I'm going to start almost every option over Cordero. Like when I put the names to the test, it's just like I. There's better paths for most other players. Uh, Kyle, you are the resident Atlanta Falcons expert. Um, thoughts on starting Falcons this week? Don't do it. You okay. don't have to do it. Just don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. You don't have to do it. Got it. Good. What about the Saints though? The Saints uh, offense. Uh, I wouldn't call it dynamic with Andy Dalton at the helm. Chris Olave is talent wise outstanding but what do you make of the falcons over the past six weeks first against wide receivers in adjusting for schedule yeah i don't know what to make of that <laughs> i don't i the teams have been able to run on them you know that's a piece of the puzzle all right uh olave is in your lineup you just need to trust the fact that he is he's going to be the highest volume receiver they have alvin Kamara, an opportunity yep. out of the bye to be healthy no Mark Ingram and get the job done. Yep, I'm he's for my, it. He, he's he's somebody that could win you a, a week. This is you know you might have traded for him or you might have held on through a bad stretch knowing that he had tough matchups. It was for this run of the playoffs. He is absolutely in your lineup and and I believe has a, a really good game. The Falcons uh, over the last six weeks, you know, you're talking about oh maybe they've gotten better against wide receivers. Maybe that's a sham. Regardless, they're not really bottling up the run. Taysom Hill is he on your bench? <laughs> He's in. Uh, he's in my Megalobowl lineup. I'm. I'm shooting Chig for the Conquo moon. Chig or uh, Taysom Hill. A Conquo. I feel like a Conquo is has a higher baseline, um, with with the expectation that Traylon Burks is out. But 
uh, man, he doesn't have the same ceiling that Taysom has. I just like what Darren Waller if he's activated yeah. or Taysom Hill. Ah! Ah! <laughs> um, uh, Darren Waller. I think I'd go Darren Waller. Yeah, I mean it's and Chig. but I I'm 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 scared. Yeah, I I did forget he Taysom ended up as the number one tight end the last time <laughs> we saw him. Oh boy, I forgot. Yeah, it was that was a particularly bad week for it was tight the big, ends. Big touchdown catch, right? Yeah, but it was it, with twelve point three points in a half point scoring format. That's yeah. not great. Not even he's, gonna, he's not even a good number. He's one. gonna be out there. He's gonna be involved. <laughs> I, I'm I'm switching to Taysom. Okay. Uh, the Detroit uh, Football Lions, who I am uh, rooting for, six and seven, taking on oh, the New York Football Jets, who are seven Alindrome. and six. Rome. The uh, DraftKings Sportsbook line here: the Jets minus one. I mean, this game is it's up in the air. The over under is forty four and a half. Both teams had uh, six and a half win preseason win totals. Dan Campbell, Robert Sala, both lovable coaches you can root for. Both teams have been the underdog for many, many years, the bottom of the league, really. And so you have this kind of contrast in successful styles on these teams. The Detroit defense is uh, a sieve, whereas the Jets defense is their backbone. Uh, you've seen the Mike White experience, which has been good, right? He's The offense has been really good with Mike White. They're one and two with Mike White. Yeah. So it, it's been very interesting to watch. You've had the emergence of Zonovan Knight over the last three weeks with, with 17 or more opportunities in all three of those weeks. You've had Garrett Wilson absolutely becoming a, a must-start option, and then you had 10 targets for Elijah Moore last week, and we don't know, and we don't really expect Corey Davis to be back. Yeah, I, I think that Elijah Moore is is in play. He's been He probably got picked up this week off of the waiver wire. Uh, we've looked up, you know, how are the Lions doing against slot wide receivers, and it, it, they give up points. You know, you had the big Wandale Robinson game it, that was forever ago. I remember when Wandale had his breakout game, that was against the Lions. Isaiah McKenzie, it's been just, just really bad over the course of the season. Yet good against the Lions. Christian Kirk, KJ Osborne, these guys had very solid weeks against this Lions team. That gives me even more confidence to to play Elijah Moore. And Garrett Wilson, of course, he's in. But the going to Zonovan Knight, uh, I can't remember which running back we were saying. Do you want to start him? Because he's been a just a a breath of fresh air, an excellent running back, getting a lot of opportunities. But that was against Chicago, Minnesota, Buffalo, who you can run on these days. Detroit, not giving up points to the running back position. First in scheduled adjusted on the season. Second, that's on the whole in, season. Yeah. On the past six weeks, which it could just be a Houston Texans funnel thing where you can throw so easily on this team that you don't really run the ball. It, it that doesn't really matter. The point is, running backs are not putting up points yeah, on and, the Lions, and it, it's it is good running backs. You know, we saw Dalvin Cook last week. Sure. We've seen Travis Etienne. We've seen Saquon Barkley. We saw. Miami when they are when they were rolling with their uh running games if you look backwards uh you know too big of a sample to just chalk it up to yeah it's not run luck at this point 10 points 12 points 5 points 7 points 8 points 10 points Th what, those numbers backs? no 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 that's the number of points below the average expectation of wow. that team coming in they are really shut and like you said it might be half shutting down the run and half opening up the the airwaves, but this is why we like. I mean, Dalvin Cook ran it fifteen times. He only gained twenty three total yards. Yeah, I mean you you you're gonna throw the ball, and and this is against a team who leads the NFL in yards allowed per game over four hundred. This is why we like Mike White. This is why you know you you feel like you need the passing options. This is why Elijah Moore looks like he's a good pickup and play this week because you're going to throw the ball and find success against the Lions, and they're at home. So you're going to have a, an opportunity to put that offense on display. The game is a, is a toss-up, basically. Uh, I'm excited about it. The, the question marks are really on the offensive side of the, the Lions because yeah. can you trust this offense that's been so dynamic who, you know, you've, you've seen big plays now. You've got big play players on the field now, right? We, we look over the course of the year and we say, well, 
You know, the Jets are an awesome defense, but the Lions didn't have Jamison Williams and DJ Chark uh, weeks ago, and and Jared Goff's been so much better at home. Like, what do you put the odds that they come out and they can do what they've been doing on offense against the Jets? I I put it uh, well below fifty percent as far as do what they've been doing, which has been just they've they're putting up points, they're moving the ball at, with ease. I think they're going to have a much more difficult time if they get pressure on Jared Goff against what he's he has not been too under pressure with the great offensive line. He's not going to be able to get the ball down the field quite the same, and you've got to deal with Sauce Gardner. So I I, I think there's going to be some struggles here. Now you're ne you're not benching Amon Ross St. Brown. Like under right. any circumstance, he's just too good, too involved. Um, but when it comes to like last week, we were very pro starting DJ Chark. Uh, we mentioned Jamison Williams in a you know in DraftKings type lineups for the big play. I don't see those guys having a lot of success against the Jets being able to throw the ball downfield. Tyler Conklin, Mike, <clears throat> he's he matchup just, play. Yeah, this is like the we're going to talk about him in a second, but you will notice a theme. Uh, in my in my starts of the week, but the matchup is there, and the targets have been there for Conklin, and the kind of highlighting, you know, the the Mike White, the way that they play the last two weeks, eighty they ran eighty three plays against Minnesota, they ran seventy three plays against Buffalo, like they go, this is a a very fast offense when it is not Zach Wilson on the field, and you know what we talk about with Elijah Moore being a good play because. Corey Davis is out. That helps Tyler Conklin target targets yeah. as well. Yep. Pittsburgh's five and eight. They take on the five and eight Carolina Panthers, who control their own destiny. Yes, that's true. <laughs> that is true. Uh, Sam Darnold playoff appearance. Here we come. Uh, one team totally out of it. One team totally in it. And same record. Same record. Yeah. The Panthers. Look, <laughs> that, that is just an analogy for life, ladies and gentlemen. That like sometimes just right place, right time. Yeah. Same record. One of these teams, no chance, no chance to make the playoffs. What failed season? Awful. Other team failed season, and yet control your own. Destiny. They could make the playoffs. Ridiculous. And I, I really enjoyed watching them run the football last week. I thought they were incredible. The offensive they, line. They wore out the Seahawks' I mean, defensive they just, line. They beat them up. Yeah, they, they did. They beat them up, and now you have two potential starting running backs that are in the mix this week for the Carolina Panthers. You had 21 carries by Deonta Foreman. You had uh, 14 carries and 17 total opportunities for Chuba Hubbard. Now, I, I assume we will be on the side of Deonta Foreman in yep. this one, but I honestly, I think Chuba Hubbard looked better last week. That's what's getting me is Hubbard looked outstanding. Yeah, I think that the, you could be in a deeper league where – you are looking at what do I do at the running back position? I've lost players. I think that Chuba is – he's in that desperation start area. Can we not talk about the Panthers anymore? There's no other players to talk about. Ye yeah. I mean – DJ Moore, don't play him. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, the other side of the ball, you have uh, Kenny Pickett. Kenny Pickett, I mean, he left the game with a concussion. It just And remember – I don't what week was it? Kenny Pickett had a concussion earlier in the season. Listed as questionable right now. What's the practice situation with Kenny Pickett? Because oh, limited on Wednesday, heading into Week 15. So yeah, I mean, it, with the second one already in the season, it seems like it'll be Mitchell Trubisky. I know that the the Steelers would prefer it not to be that way, but you got to protect the the young man. Over unders is 37 points. Jason Carolina is three point favorites. Najee Harris has been uh, better, much better of late. You're you're comfortable with him? Yeah. George Pickens, Deontay Johnson. Uh, you know it's it's not going to be uh, great. Matchup is good. Uh, the matchup is good, but if the Carolina Panthers are able to run the ball, have this be a low scoring affair. Targets coming from um, probably Mitchell Trubisky. I'm not very excited about them. About really either of them. I see them as flex level options where you have to uh make make a call this guy or that guy like for instance and uh, i think we'll differ here uh me and you andy but i would rather have michael pittman over pickens and deontay i uh, lean that way too yeah i don't know if i do it over pickens but i would be fine with over johnson pat fryer mute didn't practice wednesday expects to play 
Nerve wracking, Mike. Are yeah. you trying to assemble an entire lineup of questionable players? Do you have T. Higgins? You've it's got part of, Pat Fryermuth. Is it this is, a strategy? It's mental warfare okay. upon my opponent that they see all the the questionable players on my team and they relax and they just they they take it easy. They can just they think they can do have a, a light stroll to a victory, and then seems like mental warfare for you too. Oh yeah, definitely. But it, <laughs> it's what is uh, uh, iron sharpens iron. Sure. <laughs> so it's just I'm at war with myself. Right. No, this is the dark house. This is the light from the TV. It, the this question, the, which one of my players scored zero points this week? It will be one. One, yeah, for you sure. Get, yeah, you need to plan on it. Just build your lineup around that reality. Uh, no, it's nerve-wracking. He's supposed to be out there. You probably don't have a better option if he is. But would you go like... Carolina's good against the tight end to begin with. Would you go uh, Greg D with the backup quarterback against Arizona? I would. The matchup, Arizona, you guys have taught me. Week after week after week. <laughs> you, just, just you don't works. care about the name. No. If it was blank space, comma, T-E, mm -hmm. on, the, on the roster sheet, you would start him against Arizona. I'm not. I'm learning my lesson there. It works out. All right. All the rankings, the start, sit, tool, it's on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. It's time for our starts of the week. Starts of the week. All right. I'll kick it off. I'll get it out of the way to start our starts of the week here. Michael White. Michael White himself. Let's go. The quarterback position, it's a little it's a little tough this week, and I'm going to go with the premier matchup for the quarterback, which is facing the Detroit Lions. Mike White, uh, in six starts over the last two years, the Jets have averaged 74 offensive plays per game. That's number one in the NFL. I want him throwing the ball. They're not going to be able to run it successfully. We just broke the game down. I think Mike White is a high upside. Um, you'll put his picture on the wall type of player if he leads you to a fantasy playoff win. I'm going with Dak Prescott off of the bad performance against the Houston Texans. We, we talked about that being a, a bad matchup to play, but since week eight, the Dallas offense, they rank number one in points per game, number two in total yards per game, number two in expected points per play, and this is a matchup where you can have confidence in Dak against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Over the last eight weeks, Jacksonville ranks 31st in EPA per pass attempt, 29th in points per game allowed, 29th in schedule adjusted fantasy points allowed to quarterbacks. So Dak is here in the playoffs to get you to the next round. And ladies and gentlemen, my starts of the week, these are for the downtrodden. I know there are teams that you limped into the playoffs. You are beat up. You have lost your star players. So I have tried to go into the dumpster to find players that I legitimately think can be played and have some upside this week. We've seen the steel underpants. We've seen the titanium underpants. No one knows the dumpsters like Mike. No, no. I you, you got to go or in. the underpants. And sometimes you got You find a deal down there. I, but this I week, can't, I can't. I can't look away. Everyone. This week we have moved to unobtainium undies. <laughs> The quarterback start of the week is Matthew Ryan versus the Minnesota Vikings, and we all know how I feel about Jeff Saturday, so you know that I have to really like this matchup. Over the past five weeks, it has I have been, to trust your undies, bro. It has been the second best quarterback matchup on the season. The Vikings are allowing the most passing yards, the second highest rate of fifteen plus, uh, fifteen plus yard pass plays. Matt Ryan has two top five finishes this year. That's as many as Justin Herbert. Before you vomit all over yourself, I'm looking for the drama. Mean, but it, we, the the first week with Jeff Saturday and Matt Ryan was a very plus matchup against the Raiders. That offense came through. I think that Matt Ryan, should you be in a deep league and you are desperate, he works. He works. <laughs> <laughs> My running back start of the week. Yeah. Isaiah Pacheco, those quick feet, those ferocious hits, uh, takes on the Houston Texans. This is the uh, preeminent matchup for the running back position. Yes, it is. Most running back fantasy points given up. Uh, Houston is so benevolent with uh, what they provide opposing running backs, and he's been very good lately. Uh, over the last month, he's the running back 11, 17.5 opportunities per game. They figured some stuff out with him. He had that just bone-crushing run to end the victory last week. I think Isaiah Pacheco is a lock for um, a really high floor this week. And at start of the week for me, I am going with the running back 39 over the past five weeks. Nice. Alvin Kamara is <laughs> Super Camario this week. I am trusting the matchup against Atlanta. 
Mark Ingram has gone on IR. They picked up Eno Benjamin, and we know from every team getting rid of Eno Benjamin that they do not want. Uh, It'll be David Johnson. David Johnson will be the. I mean, he's on the fifty-three now, and he will be the guy. But uh, behind Al him, which Al is all you need to know. <laughs> they did. They claimed uh, Eno, right? Is that what you were saying? Yes, they claimed. Sorry, I was reading ahead. Eno Benjamin, um, Alvin Kamara. I do believe we'll have a great uh, game this week. Atlanta's 22nd versus fantasy running backs and 28th in expected points per rush attempt. They are four-point home favorites in a very important game. Alvin Kamara has had a bad stretch of difficult, difficult matchups. He gets the pendulum swinging all the way to the other side, and I think he's uh, a must-start this week. Latavius Murray versus the Arizona Cardinals. I told you it was going to be gross. Since week eight, Arizona 28th in schedule adjusted fantasy points to fantasy running backs. Just look at what happened last week. Ramondre Stevenson, the dude for the New England Patriots, goes down. And two running backs that, I, I don't know, the majority of people watching that game had never even heard of. Both came through with fantasy performances because you can beat this defense. No Mike Boone. I mean, like we kind of were talking about uh, Marlon Mack, who had the one big play for the Denver Broncos this this past week. If you're not concerned about Marlon Mack, as you probably shouldn't be, that means that Latavius Murray is going to get a bunch of volume. I'm expecting 15-plus touches. You'll have the, the, the chance to get into the end zone. It's going to be inefficient. It will be gross. But the volume the and the points should be there. The Cardinals are missing their best defensive lineman this week. I sure. mean, Zach Allen is done, uh, most likely. He's had hand surgery, and he is their their best player on the defensive line. So um, that, that makes a lot of sense. Keenan Allen is my start of the week at the wide receiver position against the pass funnel Tennessee defense. You saw Justin Herbert just needed his guys back. He, that's what he needed, and this is going to be uh, a really good game. Derrick Henry... Uh, is going to get a ton for the Tennessee offense. So I think you have the chance for a, a more of a shootout than people expect and uh, is a rock-solid option this week. Yeah, I have a hard time not having Justin Herbert be my number one quarterback overall this week. The matchup is perfect, and I'm taking Mike Williams right across oh, the baby. field. Play both of them. Everything Andy said about Keenan Allen uh, you know, holds true for Mike Williams. Uh, if you take out week 11, when Mike Williams played 9% of the snaps, he's averaging 13.3 fantasy points at 76 receiving yards per game. Just came back for a 6 for 116 and a touchdown on 65% of snaps. And he is the That sounds like a good season. Yeah, he's, it is. Yeah, Mike he's Williams. A, he's had a great year. He's just been, you know, in and out of the lineup, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Right. No, he, like a really nice year. Yeah, very nice year, very nice player, <laughs> wonderful week. Yeah. We built this city. Michael Pittman, now is the time against the Minnesota Vikings. I laid out a bunch of uh, quarterback stats for the disgusting play that is Matthew Ryan. Uh, but just to piggyback on that, a, a tweet from good friend of the show, Ian Harditz from PFF. Vikings defense versus wide receivers aligned on the outside. Passing yards allowed, 32nd. Explosive pass play rate, 32nd. Yards per attempt, 32nd. Passer rating, 32nd. So Alec Pierce. It could, it definitely could be Alec Pierce, but uh, like I'm saying, if I have Michael Pittman and he's, and he's just been rotting away on my bench, I think that this is the week you can put him into the flex. Close your eyes and pray. Mike is <laughs> riding dirty. I'm these are pre-pooped underpants, by the way. These are not. The I kind told of underpants. you I got them out of the dumpster. Yeah, these are not. These have been. These you have only got, throw underpants in the yeah. dumpster for one reason. These are not gently used. You imagine putting those on. These, That's rough. These are very used. Very used underwear. Yeah, no elastic. Picks left. of the week. <laughs> Greg Dulcich is my. Uh, I'm going Greg D against Arizona. Eight targets last week. I don't care if it's Russell Wilson or not. Russell Wilson stinks. This is about opportunity. This is about the quarter or the tight end position being an uh, indefensible position for the Arizona Cardinals. Um, they allow 14.8 fantasy points per game to the tight end position. That is uh, one egregious two dead last in the NFL. It's such a crazy mount. So we all have Greg D ranked as a top yeah. 10 tight end this week. Yeah, he's a good play. I'm going with David Njoku against Baltimore last week. 96% of snaps, nine targets went seven for 58 and a touchdown was a tight end three. He's already gone 7-for-71 seven against these Ravens earlier this year in this barren tight end landscape. Najoku should be uh, as good as any other 
back end tight end this week. Conk, conk, baby. Tyler Conklin against Detroit. The Lions are the third best matchup for tight ends on the season behind Seattle and the aforementioned Arizona. The output was not there, but the opportunity was. In the freezing rain this past week, he had eight targets. Again, it didn't turn into anything, but a tight end getting eight targets, that's something you want to chase, and that was just off the back of seven the previous week. So I think that Tyler Conklin is in streaming uh, consideration. Jason is fist yeah, pumping. Yeah, I know I why, too. There I, must be a waiver wire yeah, thing that just happened. Yeah, it's a waiver wire thing what'd you, of who'd some you get? sort. I picked up uh, Damian Harris, who was on waivers, and my big fear, because I was the one that dropped him last yeah, week. Yeah, I knew he and was I have, there. The, the, I will never, ever, Joyke <laughs> Bell, Joyke <laughs> Bell dropping Joyke Bell and having him used against me by ending the playoffs years ago, I can't live with that happening again, so I had to make sure Damian Harris did was- Did you spend fab on him? I did. I dropped five five. So you bills. saved a lot of fab, and you spent in the last couple couple of pickups. Yes. Kyle and I were talking about can we finagle a way to get that's a new word. Dene, uh, get Damian Harris. You don't know that word. Finagle? Yeah, it was finagle, finagle. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, I stand uh, with my statement. Go on. Uh, but and I knew Damian Harris was out there because I caught Jason dirty when he dropped. Damian, oh, I saw it. Yeah. When he dropped Mister Harris, but. Uh, you know, Lamar Jackson questionable. Mm. So sorry about that. Man. Uh, there was not enough players I could drop to make it happen. A lot of questions about whether he's going to be but out there. I my my one hope of hopes was Jason will rectify his mistake and block everyone else from picking up Harris. And I have done so. Thank you. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Last week on Boom Boom Kicker, I was sold at the Fart Mart for two cups. <laughs> <clears throat> sold for pure stink, I was locked in the clink with two cellmates fully boxed in. I made a plan to strike with fart bags named Andy and Mike hmm. to bum rush Chase McLaughlin. <laughs> Welcome to the story, fellas. I, you know, I'm pretty happy about it. I don't know how you many... You want to get worked in there, huh? Look, how many years have we been left out of the tail that is the boom boom kicker? The residual checks are going to start yeah. showing up, Mikey. Mm -hmm. So you're in this cell with Mr. McLaughlin. Yeah, we. We so, are... Well, the, we are... Uh, the 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 three of us are in the cell, and yeah. we're going after McLaughlin together. Is he in the cell? Yeah, he's, he's in or the cell. Or is he outside? He's more like the uh, he's the warden, if you will. So we're going, we're breaking out? Oh, yeah, we're oh, breaking out we, this like, place. Uh, now like the Shawshank style, or what's going oh, on? Oh, no, no, no. This isn't a long play. This isn't <laughs> this, some, this will happen next this week. Is, <laughs> yeah, this is gonna, <laughs> this is going to resolve itself real quick. Now, the, the good thing is we're in the story, and... But let's not forget, he did call his fart bags. I've oh, been, and there's more information on that next week. I've been called worse. There's more. Well, you, you've, you've got next week figured out. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. He good. he knew where this thing was going to end before the season ago. started. <laughs> Two years ago. This, this oh, you're not started. making the lost mistake. You knew the ending from the beginning. This mm -hmm. is his ice and fire. Thank you, Mike. Any chance you want to change any of your starts of the week, Mike? Uh Oh, yeah. D desperately. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm, I like the strategy though, because you can't let anyone down if nobody plays any of your starts. Yeah, that's smart. That's yeah, hey, fair enough. I'm so afraid of the Colts, man. I don't like watching them. I, I think, just for the record, I don't like watching them play football. I think they're gonna be okay. I know. I know. There, Mike was, has, there was debate. There was Mike debate. went Davis Mills once, and it worked. Yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. And he does hate Jeff Saturday, so there's it yes. says something. He's he's there. Pushed. There is inner turmoil with this yeah. start of the week. Is that it? We got any other news breaking, Brooksy? Nothing yet. Anything no. from Deucer's Alley? That seems where the fart bags would probably reside, in Deucer's Alley. Nah, not over <laughs> here. I, I just rip them nods. over there before I leave. <laughs> All right, we are going to uh, let you go, everybody. Take care. Back with uh, just a lot of suspense with the Wheel of Shame tomorrow. Any of us could be getting it. And uh, we'll catch you then, the rest of the matchups. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.